Hello and welcome back to the On The Burst podcast. I'm your coach, Brandon Savage, and I'm joined by my assistant coach, Timmy Moody. How are you, Timmy? Yeah, good. I was always like a little bit sort of like, oh, I'm the assistant coach or the head coach. Like everyone wants to be like the big thing, like the main one, like number one. Like if you're going to be B1 or B2, you want to be B1. But then I thought about like, um, I was into, I think it was Corey Norman was on a, doing a podcast interview or something and was talking about how when he um, was under coach Flanagan, Flanos was an assistant coach. And he goes, oh yeah, but back then, you know, he was an assistant coach. So he was more one of the boys. So I thought, oh, well, that's still a positive. I'm more one of the boys and you're like this strict, you know, really like authority figure that people are tiptoeing around, but I'm one of the boys. Like, I'm just glad that <laughs> Who one are of the, the boys. boys though? Who are the boys? The, the, the listeners are the boys. Oh bro. my God. They're the boys. That's probably what like it is, eh? Like, you know, like they can trust me. They can come to me with their problems. Whereas, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> whereas you're going to just make them, you know, do a couple of laps, bro, if they come up to you with any of this. Oh, uh, that makes me feel so like edgy because like... <laughs> You want to be one of the boys. Well, I've just kind of just leading into this podcast, I've been telling you, can you sit here? Can you do this? Can, can you take your hat off? And like, yeah. I've been really like nitpicky as yeah. it is. Well, so it's making me... you head coach, mate. You've got some responsibilities, all right? Mate, the... the, 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 the what's the saying for it? The, the sword doesn't fall far from the tree or something? The lemon? The apple doesn't fall... For, yeah, I don't, oh, know, I don't know. It doesn't even make sense for this situation. But anyway, how was your weekend? Yeah, no, it was good. I just um, caught up with you for a game of footy, so that was my highlight, sort of getting out and about, having a $10 schooner, mm. I think a $14 pint, and then I uh, went back home and watched some more footy. I had multiple pints. How'd you go? I, I was you were on a three to nine, strict three to nine <laughs> drinking shift. I was on a three to nine. Actually, I got there at about one thirty, so I took my first few very slow because I know like I want to be watching the footy in a very, like, clear state Co-hear and, be and understand, yeah, be able to watch the games. Because I remember at the Las Vegas event, I was just – I just went crazy. I didn't even pay attention mm. to the games really. Yeah, like, I had to go back and watch those games again. Yeah, so yeah. I had no idea actually what took place. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I had to take it very slow. But that first Titans-Bulldogs game, I wasn't very interested in anyway. So um, I kind of talked to my brother, talked to my other mate that was there. Then you come along for the second game. <laughs> you get there uh, – Finny Fuaki goes off with a HIA, so I go off with a HIA myself. <laughs> <laughs> go to the roulette table, get up 400 bucks, and bloody play it down to zero. Yeah, Finn and Fecky looked like he'd done a bloody Reese Walsh. Um, yeah, it looked very similar. I was so pissed off. Thick, I'd thicker look- skull, Finn and Fecky. Yeah, he looks very thick. Uh, not as pretty as a face, but maybe that's why he went back out because he was mm. like, we don't, y- y- Speaking of um, Reese Walsh's injury, I'm going to make a little bit of a joke and um, I'm going to just have to preface the fact that this is not my joke, it's your brother's joke. Didn't think of your brother as being a real funny guy, but he, he really. He goes all right sometimes. Yeah, he comes out with a few gems. Um, he, he goes, I said to him, I said, oh, I really do feel sorry for Reese Walsh, you know, like with. like. If I was that good looking, like it would mean a lot to me, you know what I mean? Like I'm very sensitive about, you know, my looks as it is. You know, I've got silly looking teeth and I'm getting older and all this sort of stuff. But if you were that good looking, it's important. He goes, oh, bugger him, he's got two heads anyway. And I, just, just the timing of it was so good that I was like... I was actually just like taken aback. I was like, just set up the timing. Oh, you did well, mate. You're like, hang on a minute. I've never... You've never... Been, he's kind of like me where... On the spot, he doesn't really think quickly like that. Yeah, I like, didn't think he'd have that sort of wit about him, and he was like, he was sharp. He was very sharp. Oh, very and then sharp. I was laughing, and he was just like, oh, that's no big deal. Like, what's, what's quality, <laughs> I say man? funnies like that all yeah. the time, bro. Um, if you are watching on the YouTubes, like our new setup, uh, they've put some LED lights in behind us, and I think it really makes our faces pop We're having out a fun nicely. time in here. I think, yeah, I'm, I'm a big lights guy. I like it. I like it because, like, I was real, um, I wouldn't say, uh, what's the word? It's like sensitive. Uh, what's the word when someone's like in, what's the word? I don't know. You need to give me more descriptions. <laughs> like uh, self-conscious. Yeah, self-conscious. Self-conscious these, in your head. These back walls. Like it doesn't look like a setting for a super coach podcast. Kind of looks like a meeting room. Yeah, okay. But like these LED lights, mate. Yeah. They make it pop out. I really like it. Yep. I reckon next week, Dave, they want to lift the their game a little bit, just a smoke machine. 
you know, any, oh. just occasionally, just pff, like I might say a really good fact or something like that. Smoke machine. Um, you might tell a joke of your brother's that he's pulled out again this week. Smoke and, machine. And then like a live DJ doing the do 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 do, like the the horns. All right, let's kick it off with the top five. I'm gonna tackle the top five a lot differently this week. Blind rankings, the top five tries of or top five moments of the week. The Joey Manu try where Sandon Smith, it, the ball was on the ground and Sandon Smith kicks it like to the corner. Of, yeah, that was very, very clever. Very clever. Where Wait. am I ranking that for yeah. the week? I'll put it th- four. The Cleary set up for Tago where he straightens up the defense, uh, goes across the field, shows backwards, and then goes double pump straight into Tago. Yeah, that was very uh, nice. I think there was there was still the defensive issues there there at that point. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put it at five. Five. Yeah, I liked it, but I just thought they took advantage of a weakness, which is smart of them to do. But there was that weakness there. So foremost, the Corey Waddell try to get the game on. Yeah. Uh, dying moment to the game. Left side beats four players. Over calls Daily Cherry Evans, yeah. mind you. Yeah. I was and big on this one. I think I put it in the chat. You I? did, you did, and I, I, I always feel bad if I don't put something. I only like occasionally that in there. just say that. You got to put yeah, that in the top yeah, five. Yeah, yeah. I'm probably I could be overreacting, but I'm going to chuck that at one. I just one. Yeah, I just think that for him to overcall, see that moment, and just take advantage of it, like that's a play you expect your your like a a five eight or a fullback to sort of. Or even your halfback to sort of make, but you know what I mean. Just for yeah. him to sort of see Corey that. Waddell, <laughs> yeah, yep. yeah, that was mad. I really, I rated that, and it was a big moment. Blaze Talungi's debut try. Yeah, that so that'll go to three for me. Three. Yep. So did, I've gone did you four, put, three. Did you put Sand on Smiths at three or four? I put that at four. Okay. And Tom Trebojevic's first try, which yep. um, went to Garrick. Garrett kicked the ball, and I, I think, yeah, I don't know where I put all them, but I, I thought the Sandon Two. Smith try uh, set up try for Manu would have been bigger, but yeah, oh, it was very unique, like and just the way, like it was so on the mark. Too. Yeah, yeah, that was very good. The Cleary one, like, oh, it, it was amazing. Looked, oh. It looked amazing. Yeah, probably could have put that higher than five, but I'm trying to be a little bit not a not too biased, much of a yeah. Panthers biased. Shout out to um, Luke Metcalf's try that Dallin Lutini's Lesniak set up. Mm. I think that was a good try where he pretty much ran all the way across the field and found someone running onto it into a hole. So I thought that was a good one. Let's move on to Timmy's chant. Let's move on to Timmy's tangent. Yeah, so I was a little bit stuck this week for which which way to go. Well, there was two uh, two little things that sort of caught my eye and got me thinking. And I thought we'll go down the path. There was either two facts. You can you can tell me which way you want to go. Royce Hunt, um, injury warming up, or Tommy Turbo uh, doing ballet? I think I can't go past the Tommy Turbo doing ballet. Okay, so Tommy Turbo's been doing some ballet training. Some uh, I think one of the commentators made note of the fact it's part of just his, you know... <laughs> rehab. Rehab. On and, the hemis. You know, yeah, he's been doing some some ballet. And that got me thinking, reminded me of Mighty Ducks. So you, I don't know if you remember. Never the, seen it. The Mighty Ducks, there's a there's a play where they've got a, a, a female figure skater. I think it might be the second one. Or it could be the first one. Very great. It was a long time ago for me, the Mighty Ducks. Um, but she does a figure skating move and just starts spinning around. And everyone just gets distracted and looks at her. And then everyone else does this mad like play. And I was thinking, if Tommy was just as like, like say it's it's the grand final, right? It's there's five minutes to go. They're down by four. Tommy's just like at the back and just starts pirouetting and just own, like just spinning around. Everyone's just confused. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah. Then they put on a play. Like I think I'd like to see. I would like to see some sort of distraction, some sort of. I'd like to see the ballet executed on the field, even if it's just like a bit of a to score. You know what I mean? It's a bit of grace. So we've had Timmy's hands are running for three weeks now, and every single one of them, I said this last week, is you just trying to get an advantage on the footy field. Yep. 
Well, it, the only other comment I've got to make on, you know, like I, I also have a little dancing experience myself, which is a bit weird. Um, no actual experience, but f- creating my own experience. So to, to, the best way to put it is when I was like 16, I had a mate that had a girlfriend who worked – as a dance teacher at a church mm-hmm. and I came along just to meet her and I just was being a bit of a dickhead and just um, pretended that I was an international dance teacher from overseas. And so she was like asking me, you know, my opinion on some of the the, the, the girls that were dancing and I was just giving her, you know, some weird accent telling I was from a place that didn't marry up with my accent. She ended up asking me to do some male dance classes. So I was teaching tap, jazz and ballet. You actually were. Yeah, I did it for a term. My mum was driving me there going, I don't feel good about this the whole term. <laughs> I was getting five bucks a kid. Um, but they're at an age where they didn't really need to learn much. It was more just about moving about. So, yeah, that was I was oh a dance God. teacher for for a term. Oh, my God. Teaching those sorts of Now, work. that is a Timmy's tangent. Mm. I, I cannot believe that. Yeah. And the funny thing was this guy, some people know the guy that, of the, the, that I was the boyfriend of the girl that got me this job. Yeah. He's um, – the guy in the in Penrith, he always got his shirt off, swinging yeah. around, Panther Mick, they call him. So if you've ever seen the crowd, he's a big deal. Every, all the Panthers fans will know who he is. Yeah. I used to be uh, friends with him. That time. actually reminds me, um, my brother did dancing as, uh, as a primary school person. Mm-hmm. And I was always really jealous because, mm. cause like – you got to go up on stage and do this massive show where everyone was watching, and I always loved that. All the good came around, all and the like, girls. I kind of, I went to join the next year, and I was like, I don't like this at all. But then it got me thinking about the time. So, in school, you do PWSA, which is like the yeah. the sport, and you get to choose one sport for the term. And I had the choice between touch footy, cricket. And, like, I was pretty good at both. Oh, well, I'm dancing. As, as a kid. <laughs> close. As a kid. And cricket was, like, the sport where in under-11s, I pretty much got um, – I got 50 runs and you had to retire on 50 as a kid. And I was, like – I got that in the first game and I was, like, the only kid in the age group to do it in the first game. So I was, like – it looked like I was going to have a pretty good future in cricket. That mm. was going to be part of the reps teams and all that. I decided I wanted to play netball at school because there was a couple of hot girls that I thought were in there. My mum and dad were like, actually, my mum was stoked because she played netball. My dad was like, what the hell are you doing? And I'm like, I want to play netball. And he was like, who's the girl? And I'm like, <laughs> oh, there's no girl. You know, when you're really embarrassed yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think I ended up backflipping and playing cricket. But, Doing um, a DCA. Yeah, uh, just reminded me of that. Let's move on to our burster of the week. I'll kick it off with uh, Mitch Moses. 116 Supercoach points. I know Supercoach points don't matter, but he had a try, two try assists, and he looks great. He just looked like great he, game. he was putting his body on the line. Later to find out, broken foot, out for eight weeks. So mm. I think that... Defines he's had a bit of that in his past where he's had an injury that he's played through, I believe. He's a tough little bugger, isn't he? Mm. Maybe he's just so light that he can't feel it. Yeah, I don't know. It will be definitely heavier than me. Yeah, um, that's true. My burster of the week? My burster of the week, I'm just shout out to you. I obviously listens to the podcast, G'day Yappy Coruscant. Um had gastro last week. Um, I think he was... That's a good was, one. Yeah, I think he. we went out of his way to get gastro. Was hoping he'd take a shit in his pants to get that upper edge so people wouldn't be able to tackle him. May have even, <laughs> may have even <laughs> taken a shit in his pants. It was only last week I was saying that's what a footy player's got to do to get an edge. And I even said, if I was the Tigers, I'd try it. I oh think Abby Corrissia was eating some pretty nasty, you know... Meals that he'd prepared a couple of weeks earlier, brought him out and just went, going to give it a shot. Um, the only reason he was obviously say we're at lethal, close to the line. No one wanted to get near him. Wow. So just shout out to him. And obviously playing with gastro, <laughs> bugger that, man. I've, I've I've had gastro and not wanted to like do a podcast. Like it's, it's very, very – you feel weak and you, you, anything yeah. at any time. The, the weak-gutted tiger – Appy, if you do listen to the show... He when, obviously does. Sorry? He obviously does. He, yeah, well, Appy, if you listen to the show after your first goal kick next week, 
I want you to do this. Just yeah, to yeah, yeah. T- tug your ear. <laughs> Hopefully, he gets an itchy ear and he's like, "Hey, want to be like, Whoa! <laughs> yep, we'll do that. So tug your ear after your first goal on the weekend. Hopefully, yeah. the Tigers do score some points because yeah. that'd be disastrous if they didn't. Because, But I just assume you listen to the show anyway. All right, let's move on to our tips of the week. Um, Timmy called me up on Friday. Uh, listening back to the On The Burst show from the previous week, and he wanted to debate one of his tips saying that... Um, oh, I didn't want to change it. No, 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 no. You didn't want to change it. Uh, I got your number wrong. So Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So I was going off the NRL Supercoach tipping app and yep. um, I, I apologize. I listened back and you did tip uh, the Dragons. That's right. Yeah. You tipped the Dragons anyway. So you were... In, even... in the app, I tipped it like a week earlier. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that put, put us on... Equal going into the round. How did we go last week? How many points we each get? Well, I got three from eight. Yep. Did you tip in the app as well? Yeah. I haven't found yours yet. Um, Let me get it up. I think you might have tipped more than me because actually we both tipped the Rabbitohs. Yeah. Which that's not good. I from also went own. the Titans. Got that very wrong. Yep, so Timmy is on 13, I'm on 12. Nice comeback from the So team. you're up. I had a good first round. And, and that's adding my point, is it? Yep, yep. Okay, good, yep. good, good. We're both on 12 on the app. Yep, sweet. All right, so first game this week, Sydney Roosters versus Penrith Panthers. The Roosters are at $1.60 and Penrith Panthers at $2.40. Via Picklebat, using the code TURBO when signing up, make sure to know what you're really gambling with for free and confidential support. Call 1-800-858-858 or visit gamblinghelponline.org.au. Pick up at It's a good app. I was using it on the weekend. Jesus. It was um, cashed out some money on the weekend. Yeah. But Timmy didn't. No, I had a shocker. The, the um, results were really, really crazy, a lot of them. And it feels like they were, isn't it? Very, very out there. So, yeah, I'm going to try recoup and try get back into my... Um, 10k challenge yeah so timmy was doing 20 to ten thousand dollar challenge um you got up I to did, about 70 bucks last yeah, week because couldn't get couldn't get rolling but i feel a couple attempts i feel better. this week might be a little better for us yeah um but first game roosters versus penrith i am oh, roosters are favorites I think I'll go the Roosters. Yeah, I'm taking Roosters for sure too. I think the Panthers have proven that they can have a great game, play well without Cleary. Next man up, you know, the other the rest of the guys are all lift. See is a yo um taking up a bit of that slack of Cleary's having his hands on the ball a bit more too. Um but yeah. I think the Roosters are just so good at the moment and I wouldn't wouldn't be um you know it wouldn't be the end of the world if we lost to them. The Rabbitohs versus the Bulldogs. The Rabbitohs are dollar forty eight. The Bulldogs are two dollars sixty seven. I think this is a bit strange. Hard to pick this how one. it's the the markets are at this. I think the Rabbitohs will win, but geez, I would like more value for them considering how bad they've been. Yeah, after watching the doggies last week, they actually looked really good. A lot of their. Um, you know, attack was just looking a, li- a lot smoother. They were just had a lot more effort and they were just, you know, had that energy that they, they were turning up. I think that that win will give them a sense of belief and excitement that they can really take it to the um, bunnies this week. But I'm going to just go with the bunnies for the fact that they need it. They, they need it. Broncos versus the Cowboys. The Broncos are $1.97 and the Cowboys are $1.87. I think this is way too close. I think Cowboys, o- overs, Cowboys 13+. plus. I think you can get good value there. I think the Broncos, with all their injuries, Reese Walsh is gone. The, the amount of points they score off him and, you know, they make quite a few errors, but it's made up with Reese Walsh's brilliance. Yep. Payne Haas not being there, their go-forward shot, um, I just like the Cowboys here, and the value there is great. Yeah, I like Cowboys too. Seagulls versus Dragons. Seagulls a dollar thirty-three. Dragons three thirty-three. Um, I'm happy to go the Eagles here. Uh, yeah. Dolphins versus the Titans. The Dolphins are a dollar seventy-two, and the Titans at two dollars thirteen. 
I think a Wayne Bennett Dolphins at $1.72 will get up, but I want to give the Titans another week to have a bounce back. I think they could bounce back. Yeah, I think it's more the uh, – as I think my saying in the, the Super Coach pod, I really think that Desi will rally these guys and, you know, get them to be like us first, the world. The world has got us as the Spooners. We're at $3.50 to win the Spoon. Everyone thinks that this team is completely relying on Tino and have a real chat to some of those forwards about, you know, making a name for themselves and really taking this team and leading the pack. I think they can rally this week and – shock and upset um, the Dolphins, but I'm not going to go with that. I'm just going to stick with the Dolphins based on how bad they've looked. Yeah. I think that they can rally, oh, yeah. but it's a oh, big... It's yeah, a big... I think I've seen nothing from the Titans, and I know after tipping the Rabbitohs, expecting a bounce back last week, um, it's not a good idea to base it off last year's form. So, uh, that being said, I'm going to go the Dolphins, but I'm trying. Sorry, I'm trying to get up the odds here for so uh, the Titans, and I think Mo Ford Awake is going to score. The Titans and Mo Ford Awake are first, second, or third try scorer. Is paying thirty one seventy five. I do not mind it. He's not a prolific try scorer, so yeah. But I just feel like with Tino being out, he'll want to be like, okay, I got to step up. Yeah, I see that being just through the middle, out of his own end, and in the middle of the field. Yeah. Maybe not so much. Yeah, as they a don't type, really have a hooker that's going to put him through. Eh? It's 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 extremely out there, and it's obviously going to be paid. Well, if it gets up, yeah, it's, exactly. It's rough. Uh, Warriors versus the Knights. The Knights are at two eighty two. Warriors at dollar forty three. The I hate being the guy that's just going to tip the favourites, but the Warriors have looked good. They're at home. Yeah, no reason to go against them. Uh, Cronulla Sharks versus the Canberra Raiders, $1.51 versus $2.57 for the Raiders. I'm going to go the upset yeah, in the Raiders. Yeah, wants to do it. I do, want, I do think the Sharks bounce back. Like, I think they've got a good side, but I, d- I think the Raiders have been really good this year. Yeah, they seem to just lack the the forwards, the, like a, the props. Like a Hazelton has a go, but you know what I mean. Compared yep. to some of these real yep. seasoned blokes, um, he's, Hazelton's been impressive. Mm, I kind of want to go Canberra too because just they've got that grit, and although they're not as attractive on paper, they've got a sense of belief in them. Yep. It seems to be a sense of doubt about the Sharks. Yep. Where is it? It's at Sharks, isn't it? Yep. I'll go Sharks. I'm going to be yep. yeah. I'm just going to be vanilla, but I, I'm not confident. Uh, Parramatta Eels versus the Tigers on Easter Monday. The Eels are at dollar forty nine, and the Tigers are at two sixty three. Tipping the Tigers here at two dollars sixty three. I like what I saw from the Tigers and Parramatta Eels missing Moses, potentially missing Bryce Cartwright. He might be a late scratching. I don't know. I just I, I like what I've seen from the Eels, but uh, Mitch Moses is a big out. Yeah, just looking over the history of their last three scores, and they're actually pretty close: twenty-eight, twenty-two, twenty-eight, twenty, and twenty-one to twenty. And that was the Jackson Hastings field goal. Yeah, um, I, I'm excited for the Tigers, and I'd really like to see them just chalk up, you know, at least one in every three to four games get a win. That'd be super exciting. Um, to see because it's, it's just been you know beaten down for so long. Um, I think the win last week was exciting, and I don't know whether that's enough. Like they can sort of that takes the pressure off them a little bit, and they're not as hungry maybe this week. I'm going to just be boring and try get some extra runs on the board and play the favourite here. I do think the Eels are still the better side. I'll go on the else. Cool, cool. All right. We're going to move on to a couple of new games that we're going to play with you. Um, <laughs> you sound like I'm muddy on saw. You're, like, you're, you're going to chop me up and what, you have to get out of some sort of... <laughs> so ben, ben Hunt, Caelan Ponga, Jack Bird, Suofa Longo and Jack DeBellin. What do you think they all have in common? Oh, say the names again. Ben Hunt, yeah. Kalen Ponga, Jack Bird, Sua Falongo, and Jack DeBellin. Well, I actually browsed when you were setting up 
you um, I browsed past and saw those names on your screen, and the first thing that came to mind is I thought, geez, a lot of those names just remind me of names that you could call your pecker, like your you know Jack Bird, yep. the bird, little birdie, you know Ponga. I think Ponga sounds like a name for like a donger, you know. Yeah. Um, what other names are there? Far Longo, like you know, just Longo sounds yep. a bit like a. And a name for things. I think that's, but I don't reckon that's the concept, yep. is it? No. Uh, um, so there's five players here. So I want you to have five players ready for me next week. But these five players recently had a birthday this week okay. or last week. So obviously next week you, you don't choose who's had a, play, a birthday this week. because I've got to just find uh, what they've got in common. No, 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 no. These players all have had birthdays. Mm. I want you to guess their exact age. Okay. Ben Hunt. Um, How old? How old is he turn? He, yeah. I'd say he's 32? 34. Okay. Caelan Ponga. Uh, 27? 6? 20, 26. 26, bang on. Uh, <laughs> Jack Bird. Jack Bird. Mm, 29? Bang on. <laughs> Saw for Longo. Just turned 20. 21. Oh, felt like that was probably the easiest one. And you? Jack DeBellin. Jack DeBellin. Uh, that's a toughie. I'm going to go 29. 33. Wow. Okay. So a total of five, seven. So you're off by seven in that whole five. You know, a lot of them are Australians. I was like, I know you're 30, so how much do I think? Yeah, yeah. Do I think he's one year off you or one year? Yeah. yeah. Um, so you a total of seven the uh, in between. Variances, so, yeah. So the variances, which I think is very good. Um, so I want you to come to me next week with seven players. But they can't be players with bir- the birthdays in that week. Otherwise, you it just do makes your homework. It, it makes it too easy for yeah, me do to do homework. homework. Yeah. Um, so come back with five players. Current players. Yep. Because uh, I don't want to be guessing Brandy Alexander's age, <laughs> 57 maybe? I, I don't know. I reckon that was pretty close. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we'll do something like that next week and um, maybe we'll branch out because it's actually – That's the, a fun game. I the, like guessing people's ages just in general. Yeah, the radio stations do it with, like, people who are older mm. and you can get anywhere between, like, 35 and 80. Mm. I want – maybe we'll do that. It's a fun game. Maybe we'll do that after we do mine next week, all right? Yeah. All right. Now you've got to comply with this playing another game. Don't speak until I say a better player than Isaac Tungo, Matthew Tomoko, Will Penasini, Ruben Garrick, Sifatalakai, Taylor May, Joey Manu. Yep. <laughs> I was actually, I thought you might have said Matt Timoko. You might have talked I love on Matt that. Timico. I love Matt Timoko, but not as good as Tago, I don't think. They're, they're pretty on par. They're very, very similar. All right, now tell me why Joey Manu is better than Isaac Tago. Why is he better? Um, he's definitely got way more runs under the belt, um, which I guess is not really fair because you can't really control how old you are. Um, I... Th- I just think he's just that much. Like compared to any other center, it's freakish. Like Tago looks great and does some mad stuff, but Joey Manu, like, it's just that much more pizzazzy. Yeah, I, I, that's all I got for you. It's just, I guess you know you might look at players like like a guy like Tago and go, "Geez, his workload and the amount of tackles he makes and." But yeah, I, I just think that upside, the real upside of games on the line, get who give you the ball to him, he'll win the game for you. All right, sweet. Cool. All right. Well, cheers for tuning in to our NRL show on the burst. I think it's been a nice little episode. Um, excited to see what the year brings. But thanks for tuning in. And if you are here, you're an OG. You're an absolute weapon. <laughs> You're looking know, deep into the camera there. Right I just now. want to have a bit where I'm just staring at the camera down. Like, <laughs> it's funny because, like, on the YouTube, it won't show you because sh- I was speaking. Yeah. 
but maybe I'll add that in at the end. <laughs> Just you stare at the camera. All right, cheers for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.